Um, yeah, I'm not a hardware engineer and I'm no good at electronics, but I had an idea. So I'd love to share it with you guys. Um, so I had a mission impossible because how, how do you make a PCB if you can't even solder? You know, it's a, it's a good one. So, um, yeah, <clears throat> so I'm a little bit slightly inebriated after today's football. Um, uh, but that should be okay. Because I noticed the Germans were going home very quickly tonight. Um, anyway. <laughs> right, okay. just want to say thank you to um, several people uh, that have really helped me along the way. Uh, yeah, Shunaf Dimari, Hamza Majid, Shahab Ahmed, PCBWA, and you guys, Raspberry Pint. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Right, uh, just a little bit about me. I won't read this off because uh, this is boring. Uh, but yeah, I'm a family man. Uh, I learned how to code when I was very young. Uh, <clears throat> I got an article published when I was 14, taught myself how to write assembler. Um, yeah, so I didn't even bother going to university. I just went straight into professional work because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, and I've been around the block quite a few times in, in the world of software. Uh, done quite a few languages, but um, yeah, I, I guess you know, I'm not proper old school because uh, you know, um, if I had punch tape and coding sheets and valves, then yeah, then I would be you know, a respected old school person, but I haven't quite made that. Um, also make music too, but the most important thing is, is I'm just absolutely rubbish at uh, electronics. So, uh, so that's why I thought I'd do a talk about this because um, I'm quite humbled about um, you know a lot of you members here uh, who, who really know what they're doing, and so I'm really going out on a limb now um, talking about this because uh, you know this is this is this is a, a brave new world, um, and you know, I don't know whether it's right or wrong. So, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I took the the path of least resistance, so I'm gonna talk about that. So I'm going to tell you, you know, I had an idea. I got a PCB designed. Uh, I got it made. And when it came back, it was like, well, what, what do you do with this then? How does it all work? And then realizing it's not going to work. And then I had to fix stuff. And then I had to write software for it. And then where I went after. So, yeah. So the title was uh, just a spreadsheet, uh, but it was a bit of background before that, to be honest. Um, you know, I've got so many Tupperware uh, <laughs> boxes full of MCUs, SOCs, uh, you know, sensors, the lot. You know, I've, I, basically I had all the gear and absolutely no idea, um, but I thought I'd soldier on, you know. Uh, being the man I am and and what I was doing I was, I was trying to search for an idea like it's like I've got all this stuff and you know internet of things is going to be you know really big and it's going to be here somewhere within these you know microcontrollers and all these all these you know these sensors what's it going to be um and and after a couple of years I thought hang on a minute I've I've, I've connected some dots here so uh this might be interesting from an educational perspective at the very least. Um, so it's like, right, okay, well, I've got the sensors. I need to, I need to connect them. Like, you know, I'm not going to connect these to the computer. This is going to be tricky because uh, I'm not really a hardware expert, but luckily uh, I know a bit of software and I know how to write software. And I kind of get, you know, what CPUs do because uh, I've got a background in it. Um, so I thought I'd give it a go. So <clears throat> what did I want? Right. So I thought, wouldn't it be good if like, you know, if you had all of these different components on there, it's like, you know, these are like most, the most common environmental sensors you can, you can get. So, um, you know, it's, I want to know if I'm moving or vibrating or, uh, you know, what my orientation is, my temperature, humidity, what's the pressure, 
what's going on around me sonically, you know, all good. But uh, that's quite a lot of data to start taking in. So it's like, oh, okay, oh well, probably need a, an SD card reader to record the, um, you know, the audio and the data that's coming by, coming through. And then I thought, well, you know, LEDs, buttons, I don't know what they might be for, but I'll put them on there anyway, because everyone likes a button and everyone likes an LED, don't they? Um, and a buzzer. I thought I'd put a buzzer to it as well, because I like buzzers. I like making noises. I'm a music producer. Uh, and also like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, because it's the Internet of Things. It's a thing. I don't know quite what it is yet, but it's a thing. But it's going to need to connect, and it's going to need to connect via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, obviously, after flashing, you know, I need to flash this thing, you know, write software on a computer. I want lots of memory because I've got absolutely no idea what I'm going to do. And I've got, you know, I could be using TinyGo. I could be using MicroPython. I could be using Swift, you know, MicroSwift even. Um, and I wanted uh, GPS connectivity as well because I want to know where this thing is, maybe. That's why I made it optional. And, you know, if there's no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, wouldn't it be great to phone home wherever it is, you know? Uh, and, of course, low power consumption is, is quite important because, you know, this thing takes up power, especially phone calls, especially the GPS. Uh, but, you know, I realised that there's, there's complexity around that, so I added a JTAG debugger to it. So. Right, uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, I tried to build a prototype, <laughs> I failed miserably. Right, you know, it was, yeah, it was terrible. Um, I got blisters on my fingers because you know, I kept burning myself, and uh, I couldn't type as a programmer, <laughs> so I just had to stop. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, I, I, I just had to swallow my pride and go, Look, I need some help. Uh, and then it's like, What am I going to do now? What am I going to do? So what do you do? You, you call you call someone. And uh, I called these guys and it all sounded positive at the beginning. And then it didn't sound so positive. So I said, cheers, thanks, bye. And that was it. So the next thing was find a freelancer. Uh, after realizing agencies are, you know, they've got they've, they've got a building. They've got staff, they've got secretaries, they've got receptionists, they've got web presence and all of that kind of stuff. You know, that costs money. Um, so I went on to Fiverr and I, and I found, well, you know, I found, found quite a few people that were quite keen to, to help me out for relatively, you know, a small amount of money. And that's good for me because, you know, I'm a family man. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not an agency. So um, yeah, spoke, spoke to Srinath, uh, went through a few things, um, showed him a diagram and I let him get on with it. And what I let him get on with was, uh, you know, I gave him a spreadsheet. It's like, right, okay, well, I've got this sensor. Where does it go? What pins does it need to go to? So, you know, I could make sure that you know which pins went where, and that was about as uh, as much as I could could manage. You know, I, to be honest, I didn't even know what a pull up or you know a resistor was. You know, it's like you can see here. What does that mean? Help! <laughs> I didn't know. Um, so yeah, I left him to it, and then he sent me a spec. Uh, you know, schematic. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell is this? So I had to wing it and, you know, say, oh, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that pin doesn't look right. I mean, I went through this for days. I mean, you guys are, are experts, so, um, you know, you could probably just look at this, you know, and do your crossword at the same time, probably. Um, but for me, it was another world uh, and opened, opened my eyes quite a lot. So, uh, yeah, so I gave him the spreadsheet. I get the uh, I get the schematic, and then they go away and design a PCB for me. This is amazing, really. Like you know, it's like 
there's a tiny little PCB there the size of a credit card. And it's got all this stuff on it. That's great. Um, <laughs> and then I was asked to review it. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, sorry. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know how to review this stuff. Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe you could move that component over there a little bit. That would be better. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe you could orient it, you know, the, the IMU, like, you know, the accelerometer in the middle, perhaps. Uh, and then I've got sent these files. Don't know what they are. <laughs> I like to figure them out too. So there's KiCad, which is the design, the PCB design. Uh, you know, it kind of allows you to zoom in and really see, um, you know, what wires connected to what and what layer on the PCB. And obviously the schematics, which you saw earlier, uh, so I won't talk about that. Um, and there's this thing called the Gerber files. I was just thinking, what, what are Gerber files? So, you know, for the uninitiated, and I'm sure there's a lot of initiated here, so I'll be really quick. Gerber files are basically, they tell you, they're files which are kind of uh, electronically generated uh, based on the KiCad files and the schematics. And they tell a machine where to drill holes, you know, where uh, the tracks go uh, and where, where to place components on it. So, you know, you can practically automate the, uh, the construction of your PCB with these files. So with, there are a couple of exceptions. I mean, there are some things you still need to solder manually, but for the smaller parts, you can do that. And a bomb, I thought, oh God, you know, what am I going to do here? This, what's a bomb? Figured out as a bit of materials. And that's like, oh, a bit of materials. Okay, that's like a, a receipt of stuff. Uh, so yeah, and that was, that was, you know, I had to use that to uh, pass over to PCB Way. So and then it was like, right, what do I do now? Uh, so I learned off the internet, you know, that people like JL PCB and PCB Way, they take these files and they 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 make them. I thought, great. Um, I made an executive decision. I've got a coin out of my pocket. Which one's it going to be? PCB way, PCB way one. So yeah, I did did what I needed to do, create an account, uploaded the files, job done, right? No, no. I mean, I just I didn't know anything about solder mask. I didn't know how to check the orientation of the chips or tolerance breaches of like you know. Uh, you know, this, this track is too thin. Or, you know, I didn't understand any of that. Um, and then they went through the bill of materials and said, oh, we haven't got that part. We've got this part. And I'm like, oh, my God. I don't even know what these things are. So, obviously, I went straight to my PCB designer. Uh, Srinath was one of the guys I, I dealt with first, uh, and he helped a lot. And Shahab and Hamza were another two guys that have helped me in later steps, and they were really, they've been really helpful too. So they went through, it was all great. And I thought, right, it's all good. And then there was more things that came back, and it's like, ah, oh, is your, you know, is your sensor oriented the right way? Is your, are your LEDs oriented the right way? You know, diodes. I don't know, don't know, sorry, I haven't got a clue. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably, I can't see you, but I'm sure you're laughing, thinking I'm a complete idiot. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, um, but I shouldn't be doing this. This is way out of my comfort zone. Um, but then next thing I know, it comes through the post. But I had to pay, you know, they had my, I had me at ransom at customs, though, so I had to pay duty. So I've paid the duty. Of course, of course you do. Um, and, you know, it costs, you know, from the original 5,000 uh, 5, pound estimate, you know, for about 750 quid, uh, I've got, you know, several iterations of PCBs designed. I've got five prototypes of four layer boards, right? Uh, I had a couple of iterations of that so far. 
uh, but I've not put that in these costs. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it saved me so much money. And I got this device and it arrived and I was totally amazed. And I was like, great, this is, this is brilliant. Um, but yeah, it wasn't plain sailing because obviously if you've got custom board builds, you've got to, you know, you're using different pins on a controller, all that kind of stuff. So, I, you know, luckily being a programmer, uh, it was relatively, I wouldn't say easy because it was in C and I don't like C. I'm a Java programmer. Um, so I thought it'd be relatively easy, but it wasn't. Um, but I had a go and I started to remember things, you know, my ancient past started rearing its ugly head again and, you know, started cracking on with the code. Um, and, you know, then I had to learn, start learning about SPI, you know, I2C, I2S, UART, PWM, all these little buzzwords, which are kind of electronics -y, but they're just about how data moves over a bus, you know, over the wire. So uh, just had to kind of refresh myself there and, you know, just, just look at the source code and try and figure out what's going on. Um, but there was a hot, there was one hardware bug in the first, first cut that came out and uh, yeah, I had to solder one resistor. So yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm, I mean, to be fair, I didn't solder up to that point, you know, for this board, but after I'd got it, then I kind of had to do a tiny bit of soldering. So I hope I can be forgiven for kind of lying. Um, sorry about that. Um, yeah. And also this is, this is the big one, having a good quality USB cable. I had loads of USB cables floating around, but they weren't, they didn't have like a ferrite, um, ferrite beads or like a ferrite casing around one end of the cable. And that caused a lot of errors in flashing and, you know, uh, you know, being able to recognize a device, slow transfer speeds, errors, all that kind of stuff. So that was a really interesting thing to learn. Um, so yeah, what you're seeing on the bottom there is, uh, is the third iteration uh, of the device. It's, I'm gonna be able to stick a, uh, a SIM 7000E phone on the end of it optionally, or I can put a, a GPS in it optionally. Well, you can see that bunch of uh, headers over here, just, just in front of the, or just underneath the capacitors. Uh, yeah, so there's, there's a few things I'd like to do with it, um, you know, it will be interesting to do. I'm carrying on, you know, there's been a bit of a chip shortage lately, lately so uh, it basically means I can't buy any accelerometers because they've just disappeared off the face of the earth. Uh, there was there was about 50 odd thousand freely available and now there's uh, 50 odd thousand on demand and they're not going to be delivered for another year, apparently. So, yeah, I'd like to thank, as I said earlier, I'd like to thank those people, uh, you know, Srinath, Hamza, Shahab, Katie, um, who I showed this to originally. Um, yeah. And, yeah, there's a few things I need to do. Uh, I need a case for it. Uh, I want to reach out to some educational establishments because I think this would be a great thing to learn at code clubs and stuff like that. I've, I've worked at code clubs. I've, I've volunteered there in the past and, uh, you know, worked with scratch for kids and they love it, but maybe this might be the next level stuff for, for kids to play with. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a pretty neat device. So uh, yeah, if anyone's, uh, <laughs> if anyone wants to join in the fun, let me know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that's me. Um, so yeah, I've just told you, uh, I've had an idea, I've done my homework, I've connected some dots, and I've found some, some decent people that can, can help uh, you know, move that idea forward. I found someone to manufacture it. I've got files, I sent them the files, and uh, you know, um, yeah, make sure the PCB manufacturer talks to your PCB designer as well. Um, and even if you can't write the code, you can find someone to do that for you too. All right. So 
actually you could be more of a charlatan than I am and not know anything and still be able to get something out there. Thank you. Uh, that's me. Brave. <laughs> that was really, uh, really interesting. I'm just amazed you took that on and uh, went through all that. Uh, must have been very uh, uh, stressful and nerve wracking. Uh, yeah, but it was fun. It was loads of fun, honestly. I'm just trying to turn off my uh, screen share. Uh, is it off? My screen share is off now, is it? Still, still on. Oh, oh where yeah, is it? it looks like you learned a, learned a lot on that. So, so I guess the intent is you have like you now have like a, a generic, uh, or sorry, board that can do many things. Yeah, yeah. It's some. Um, one of my one of my things has just fallen down here. So one of my props at the back here has fallen down. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a generic board. It's um, I'm just going to move this over here. It's got my project board up there, so I don't want anyone to see that. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, with all of those little bits and pieces, I think it could be quite useful for just for playing with or you know the Internet of Things. We've got this home automation thing going on right now. Uh, which is all great, and uh, it's it's gone. Um, Your project board now, Gary. If you want that, uh, <laughs> or you, can, you can you can blur your background or so, like I did. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, okay, I'll do or that. You can be in a pub. I can be in a pub. Hey, now that's what I want to be. <laughs> hey, I want to be having a beer with you, sir. That's where I want to be. Uh, so. not, 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 not this fridge. I'll I'll, I'll switch <laughs> to a different fridge. <laughs> okay um yeah so what does it do it, yeah i mean so it looks it's fun isn't it oh, look at that well um yeah I'm, I'm quite happy to sort of just play with things and you know having a little board the size of a credit card uh you know the size of a raspberry pi even you know seems like a, a quite a a well-established prop proposition which um which you know everyone knows that they they like the idea they like the form factor so it's kind of like a raspberry pi but without display drivers but it's got all the other fun stuff attached to it you know so uh and you know sort of i think the original proposition of the raspberry pi was to um it was to you know bring people closer to the hardware that was the that was the original idea of it it's like yeah let people play with the hardware but what what ended up happened was um they put Linux on it, right? <laughs> that's um, why Arduino, of course, because you don't have Linux on your Arduino. That's true. That is true. Um, so yeah, I thought, well, if, if it's an SP32 and it hasn't got like, you know, gigabytes of memory in it, then you can't really put Linux on it. You know, you're, you're kind of more constrained. And, you know, that's, that, that's, that reminds me of how I used to program when I was really young. You know, I had a VIC-20, three and a half K memory, you know, super constrained, but it had color and it had sound. And, you know, you pretty like... columns. <laughs> yeah, so I had all of that. And, you know, I just wanted to bring some of that, call it a midlife crisis, right? I wanted to bring some of that fun back. Yeah. And there was nothing that was out there that could do that for me. But this did it for me. Just the whole process of making it was 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 just amazing and fun and a little bit stressful. You're right, Richard. Yeah, just a little bit. So what, what, what made you uh, go directly full dive into PCB design and not sort of first dabble a little bit with Arduino because all those sensors you can hook up with wires and breadboards to have sort of more of an easy way going forward instead of diving into PCB design. Right. Okay. Um, I, I did say uh, at the beginning that I did play with quite a lot of MCUs and uh, oh, yeah, sensors and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I didn't. Look, I think I'd be absolute nuts to do what, what you just suggested there. To be honest, um, and I, I would have failed. I would have definitely would have failed because uh, that would have been too much, too much of a leap. Um, you know, behind me, I've got you know those little Tupperware boxes full of MCUs and sensors, and you know. Arduinos, uh, is ESP32s, the, you know, the, you know the lot. You know, it's like your beer selection at the back uh, yeah. of you. You know, people of my background, and then you see the boxes that I have. Uh, where is it again? It's uh, 
was non. So these are my boxes. <laughs> it's also oh wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> filled with shit and electronics and stuff. <laughs> and it's like it's like it's sort amazing. Of, sort of cataloged, but yeah, there's also stuff there that you don't see. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so yeah. Well, and that got the t-shirt <laughs> well mate honestly that, that you know I, I need a bigger room <laughs> i need a bigger room My, mine's tiny uh okay i'll uh, I'll, I'll do it more proper so, so, uh, so, so, been there, then. <laughs> i love zoom <laughs> it's great isn't it it's brilliant i love it uh, yeah. yeah that's really good uh, cool. so what uh, another question i saw on the on the, on the chat is like what does it do <laughs> um what does it do well it just records environments well it can do anything it can um it's a computer and it's got sensors and it's got wi-fi and it's got bluetooth you can make it make phone calls and you can find it even know where it is right it's just like well what if i stuck one of these things uh you know maybe i've just sold my ming vase all right and i want to put it in a van and I want to know that it's been treated well. Yeah, you could measure the sensors and they very excellent. Yeah, so you can measure all of that stuff. You know, you you, you know if it's been treated well. You know if it's you know if it's been held the right way up. Uh, if it gets lost, well, people know where it is. Um, you know, I was just connecting some dots. I was just connecting dots because you know home automation is one thing, but you know the Internet of Things is, you know, Amazon tell you that your parcel's not far. But how far? And has it been treated well? You know, I mean, it's not for books, this thing. I mean, this is for more expensive items, but that was the idea. The idea was to kind of just join all the dots and and figure out, you know, where there was a gap. You know, there might there might be a gap in the market, but I don't know if there's a market in the gap right now. So I've got to find that bit out. Well, there are lots of trackers, commercial trackers as well. For example, for temperature, if you mm. want to ship medicine over to Africa, they have these little sensors that just measure the temperature over the whole uh, journey. And then if it's too high, then they can say, oh, we cancel the shipment or we don't pay you. Stuff like that. So mm. there's a market for that, definitely. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, you know, <laughs> um, you know, I'll, I'll need a very large yacht, though, I think, if I'm going to put all my stuff in there. But uh, I doubt that's going to happen. But it's nice, nice to dream about that. Have you thought about... Uh, uh, the, the database or the the, the, the the little device i have another one here uh, it sends data you have to collect the data uh yeah. it's it's a, it is a wi-fi and 4g connection so you need to inject that into the system have you, have you looked at that already as well yeah so mqtt seems to be the thing so um you know the idea is is that you know, I can collect this data on it um i don't have to collect it constantly um you know to keep battery don't low uh you know you can set some interrupts up on it and if any tolerance is breached then it can wake up and just store that um but even better than that you can you know just like in stock market charts you've got like the candlestick charts where you've got like an open and close and high and low value so you can record that at, at intervals um you can record the gps just wake the gps up every now and then don't keep it on because that uses up power uh, uses up about 30 milliamps if if i remember correctly uh, so <laughs> that 30 milliamps is a lot for a battery um so you know if i can wake it up every half an hour or an hour that's great maybe every few hours it can ring home and just send a burst of mqtt messages just to give you an update one of the tricks you know. that trackers do is uh so the accelerometer is a very uh, cheap sensor uh current wise so you can yeah. really measure if there's any high accelerometer, and then you can then you can indeed wake up the the GPS and start sampling. So if you're shaking, you can think, oh, maybe I'm in a car driving, and then you sample the GPS more often than if you're like steady. So there's tricks like that you can also there's tons of uh, refinements you can do for uh, for uh, yeah 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 that's 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 good. It's I mean. I need an MVP though, right? I need a minimum viable product. So, I mean, if I keep doing this, I'll just keep going, oh, I need another thing. There's another thing. Hey, and I'll be, on, I'll be on version 67 before it goes out there. So, um, you know, so let's, let's try and get sort of something really, you know, I want to get something out there. I want to get people trying this out and having fun with it. Uh, and also, 
you know, wouldn't it be nice to have a better informed conversation with your insurer if something goes wrong? You know, wouldn't that be nice? And, you know, so I'm just, I'm just trying to make the world slightly better place. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a rocket scientist. I'll, you know, I can't send people to the moon, but I might be able to send parcels around the, com- you know, around the country. You know, it's a, that's not, not such a bad thing, especially if you move in house, you know. I'm curious on what kind of price you're aiming to get this because I've seen the other trackers out there and their biggest problem for all the other trackers is things like the phone networks because you have LTE in the US and 3G, GSM in other parts of the world and they end up building these virtual phone networks to go everywhere and the actual cost for them is not the device. It's the logistics of getting your thing to phone home. Yeah, that's an interesting one, actually. Um, so, yeah, I did consider that because I mean, this is the this is the the, the phone. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's a SIM seven thousand E. So there's a, there's a global version of this, uh, which will give you MBIOT LTE you know, communications. So. There are certain frequency bands that they work on. Um, so this one's just for Europe, the one I've got here. I mean, I'm going to start small. I'm not going to be trotters, independent traders, you know, you know, New York, New York, Paris and Peckham. Right? I'm not going to do that just now. But, um, you know, I want to, uh, you know, just start it, you know, moving up and down the country, maybe try and get some, get some interest in it, uh, see how it works. Uh you know, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be a phone on it. It could use, you know, Apple's. Um, Apple have got this new tracker, which is Bluetooth, which is piggybacking off the back of Apple's Bluetooth networks uh, with their phones. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. I don't think Apple are going to allow me to piggyback off of them. So, uh, um, so probably Bluetooth is out of the question, and Wi-Fi is probably out of the question. But you know. Um, so as long as I'm near a 4G thing, then it should be, I could be able to make a call every now and then. The one you should look at is Tile, because Tile are doing stuff with Amazon now. Okay. And they're, they're, they're looking to be a more open version of Apple's AirTags. The, Tile was there before Apple, and Tile had a little, yeah, Tile felt sort of um, not abandoned, how do you say it in English? Um, uh, in, in Apple and this called this term called Sherlock for it. So um, Tile was there like two years, three years ago for you. I, I've got a lot of tiles, but the problem mm. with Tile is you needed the app before it was useful. And if like a billion people have that app, that's great. But a billion people didn't have that app, so it was basically right. stuck. And now Apple, of course, uses it and they overtook it and put it in their OS. And now suddenly 1.3 billion people have it. And now it's very useful. I, I, I have one of these air tags and they're, they're great. Um, the, the, worst part about t- the worst part about the tile for makers was that the original tile yeah, the original. would run out after a year and you had to get a new one and you had to yeah. buy a new one every year. I, couldn't, I, I tried to open the tile to replace the battery. <laughs> it was incredibly hard. It's like you're chainsaw, so you made another chainsaw, you needed a saw and stuff like that. But, but Apple did say that they were opening up their uh, network and I also I've also re- already seen uh, third-party implement implementations of of trackers using Bluetooth that 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 sort of high not hijack uh, lift on lift on the on the Apple network and I don't know if at some point of course it's Apple being Apple I'm an Apple developer I'm not working for Apple but I'm making apps and they can kill it off any second like oh yeah oh we don't like you kill so that's the, 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 the thing with Tile is that they're working with Amazon. Amazon and Amazon just rolled out the Amazon Street initiative, which basically means that all the Amazon devices that you people have been happily buying and plugging into your tellies and putting them in your front doors now listen up Bluetooth signals and call home on its own internet channel. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, so that gets you your penetration. <laughs> Uh, I don't like that. Okay, I'm going to have to have to <laughs> stop there. Th- thanks very much, Gary. That's a really really interesting talk. Yeah. Thank thanks. Th- thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'll yeah, tile. I've I've made a note.
Well done. It's great, it's great to have an update in another month or so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a few months probably. Yeah. Let's see how you go. Yeah. Well, so Thanks. Thanks. Different. Thanks.